I'd like to introduce our first talk with Giacomo Gianelli from Stream Colors. Giacomo is the creative and visionary soul of Stream Colors. He is a digital artist and a video game veteran with close to 15 years of experience. He is the video games art director and professor of video games art direction at the IED University in Milan. His passion for technology, philosophy, nature, and science drove him to great, create a generative art system through a 3D graphic alphabet, The Giants, where he manipulates images in real time to create videos and artworks. I'm looking forward to this, and I hope you are too. Round of applause for Giacomo. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for all for coming today. First of all, I want to thank you, Luigi Ferrara, the Dean of the School of Design, to invite us, and Alessandro Ruggera for the Italian Cultural Institution that invite us to come here, and Maria Grazia Mattei from MIT that bring us to. So first, uh, first of all, I want to show you an interactive installation that you will see in the new School of Design. I don't know if we can send there. So this is the interactive one. I will quickly go through the presentation, just presenting myself. I'm Giacomo Gianella, video game art director and CEO and creative director of Stream Colors and teacher in uh, University in Milan about video games and digital art. I have founded uh, with uh, Giuliana Geronimo, my wife that is over there, this studio that is focused on uh, interactive uh, tools and interactive technologies applied on uh, cultural content and uh, entertainment. We define as game developers, cultural innovators, and digital inventors. You can have a look at a quick uh, showreel of our latest production. 
we put uh, the stream machine inside museum, uh, letting people to create their own contents and share it uh, through the web, um, combining their artwork with the original information from the paintings. We also develop video games for brands, but uh, not the mainstream video games. We create the custom video games for uh, events or for uh, opening or for store. In this case, this is uh, uh, an anticipation of a work that we made with uh, Ubisoft for Assassin's Creed, but also Atro and uh, Fuxas Architects in uh, what we have a collaboration in Italy uh, last time. Our goal is explore the medium of video games and the technology of video games for uh, creating new um, concept and new format. We also make live events like this fashion event that are basically uh, supported by our art research that I will explain later. We are also a fan of the science part of uh, instruction, so we use real-time technology to create uh, uh, real-time simulation about uh, the space, because we love space. We also use uh, video games to make uh, uh, some participation uh, around the cultural contents in museum and uh, um, schools. So we want to bring people to think about new concepts for educational purpose. We are also game developers for mainstream content. This is our last production in video game market. This is another site that is a video game that talks about uh, this blind girl and uh, her cat that travel in a, in a journey meeting different people from the history. So she met uh, Claude Monet, Tesla, Edison and other characters and there is a story behind. So she needs the help of the cat that is able to see the world in the right way and the cat needs her possibility to see uh, the world in an abstract way. So we try to put our vision of uh, uh, abstraction also in mainstream products. It will be released very soon, I think in a month, for PS4, Xbox and uh, PC. As you see, this is a very big challenge for us because we switch from mainstream production to uh, concept production. So these are the topics that we will go through on the presentation. I will uh, speak about the idea uh, behind all our works that is called the giants. And then we will see uh, three cases of uh, a project that we made and uh, that increase our potential. And then we focus on the contents that we prepared for the School of Design this year. So what is the giant? What is a giant? A giant is a, a piece like that, is a three-dimensional uh, shape that we uh, create starting from uh, nature and reality. So it started in 2004 when I uh, decided to uh, explore new possibility in art and technology. The first question was how we perceive the world. How can we hack our perception of world? And in this hacking, is there any aesthetics? So to do that, I start remixing nature using real-time technology and creativity. The main goal was uh, to create something that was able to create a live design and mix mathematics and human skills. In this image, you understand quickly how a giant born. It is a piece of nature and uh, with a mixture of uh, mathematics and interaction by human, the, it, it creates a different shapes that can 
host and can be covered by texture from reality. The texture at the beginning were inspired by flowers, butterflies, places, and animals. So at the end, the giant is definitely a free design tool that is uh, mathematical, modular, and of course, generative, but is human-based design, so it's not full mathematical, and is inspired by reality. When I discovered this, um, my need was to bring that in reality. So very, at, at the beginning, I uh, suddenly understand that the final uh, stop of this process could be the design. So just for fun, I start making pre-visualization on lamps, watches, mugs, t-shirt, and wallpaper with the idea that this was uh, the key to create a modularity, to create a customization, and also to expand people's possibilities to create their unique vision of life. But this was not enough. To expand the possibility of the project, I understood that I had to work with people and work with uh, brands. In this case, as you see, these are some brands that we work with, and for each brand, we create uh, giants that start from their DNA. I will go through the first case that was the meet with uh, Kinetro, who is uh, a designer, fashion designer. He saw the idea behind the, the giants, and he made uh, this uh, uh, proposal create a fashion show uh, projected on one, 120 meters of uh, multi-projection and keep the models inside and in the background, the new language of the giants. The idea was to start from the clothes, the texture, and transform this applying on the giants creating a scenography that was able to, to create a new level of perception of reality. So the first part was declaring the alphabet. All the uh, fashion show uh, present this form and the texture applied on it in a dreamscape surrounding the, the people. So after that, with the Kinetro, we understood that the next step of this was uh, create uh, time and space and uh, human uh, driven experience. So we created the second fashion show that was the first fashion show made uh, live. So it's running on a real time technology and we made this uh, projectation that was inspired by 2001 Space Odyssey and was uh, called uh, Colors Odyssey. As you see from the top, you can see a fish because the, the theme was the food. But when you go on the side of this giant, you see Etropolis, that is the, the city made starting by dead colors. This is a tool not for me, this is a tool for people. So the designers start using their, our technology to create their vision. Very quickly, I can explore the process. We painted out all the models texture as a paint, and then we apply on mathematical uh, giants. On the second part, we decide that uh, the experience should be live. So 2001 was very, very inspiring. And uh, the idea was also to present reality in a different way. For instance, in this case, when you go through the city, the city is uh, based on colors of the texture clothes, but is uh, build every time in a different way. So every experience is different. Then we decide to use the video game medium 
to create a, a new storytelling for the next fashion show. As you see, we use uh, old cabinet, video game cabinet, and not uh, PC or console, because we decide to use old technology with new technology inside to create something that can surprise people and uh, destroy expectation. In this case, this ball is uh, our um, vector for curiosity. The idea is that we build this world, an archetypical world, where it's all based on the desert rose that was the main uh, icon of the show. And in this uh, journey, the ball meets the storytelling of the fashion show, the video fashion show. So a new way to explore contents that are no, not linear, they are connected with the human experience. And in this way, contents can be, in a way, more empathic and not uh, passive. This game was set in the store and during the fashion show exhibition. So we love to create unique uh, uh, products and not uh, um, based on the uh, client's needs. At the end, there is not a goal, but what is important is that you can uh, express yourself and feel free to explore contents. Then we move to uh, collaborate with other artists. In this case, we work with Marco Bravura, who is a, a very important mosaic artist in, in Italy and in the world, I think. And he was so shocked about, about our methodology, and he asked me to, to create new contents starting from his uh, masterpiece. So we create this world where every time, uh, in real time, this world was covered by new solution of mosaics. And he start taking pictures, taking high resolution image from this world, and also create a giant in real life. So our goal to bring back from digital to reality was success. With the same philosophy, we work with the Fuxas, and we explore the idea, is it possible to create architecture in this way? Is it possible to visualize new world ab about that? And we focus on uh, the perception and the high contrast between uh, holes, black and white, and, uh, and space in general. Okay, so the, the first part of, of the uh, research was starting from its module of architecture and create new uh, solution that can enlarge uh, possibilities. The, in this part, we start, start uh, watching and exploring to see how we perceive the interaction between these, uh, these shapes, and we define a new uh, methodology. This methodology was then expanded with the movement, and we see that we can perceive a change of shapes without changing, changing shapes. So the factor, the, the time and space were two elements that were important to, to see a new experience of shape changing. And based on that, we uh, explore different shapes, and he starts, the studio starts to imagine this shape as an environment for airports. You can have a look in the new um, design school an installation that is based on that, so I don't want to spoil it too much. 
So we can start talking about the content that we made for the School of Design. The first one is uh, String Colors Odyssey. String Colors Odyssey is a gamified experience where you can uh, hack and interact with uh, shapes, colors, space, and time. What was our goal? Our goal was to create a, a system, an autonomous system, able to generate unexpected presentation of reality, connected with uh, human interaction. As you see, this world is in black and white, and we have an avatar that is uh, a small giant that goes around and uh, uh, to expand the possibilities of colors, this uh, avatar can collect items, but can also uh, activate some uh, uh, process of environment colors. In this way, we can also accelerate time, accelerate uh, freeze time, change weather, and so you have always a different condition of what you see. This was the place where we put our studies about perception. So this uh, sculpture that you see, the black and white, are part of the projection that we start with the Fuxas and is the base core of our perception. As you see, when you take this, the time pass through, and so you are able to change and see during the night, during the day, or freeze an instant that you want to have as part of your uh, um, exploration. So there is not a goal. The goal is that uh, if people interact with this installation, the installation is full of colors, is full of uh, uh, amazing things. If no one is using it, it returns to black and white and it's waiting for someone. As you see, you can also create a magic uh, uh, perception of space using symmetry but advanced symmetry, so you have symmetry just in some part of, of the landscape, not on the image. The idea is that you can expand colors with your curiosity, and you can also see a new perception of this uh, research in a high contrast design. Then we move to talk about more about Stream Machine. As I said, Stream Machine is a software that is based on Unreal 4 by Epic and is uh, uh, set inside visitor centers, shops, art galleries, letting people to create immersive room and uh, product design. So what are the uniqueness of the Stream Machine? Stream Machine can create infinity possibilities of design, but is also full interactive, so needs people interaction, and is also guaranteed by our research in art. We put also empath empathic learning so every time you edit an image, you can also see the details and the original information about the artwork, and you can send an email or create a product starting from that. These are the places where Stream Machine is set in USA, UK, Italy, and uh, in Milan, and is set now also in the George Brown Design School. People can unleash their creativity and they can find their own uh, psychedelic uh, moment. But during this moment, they can learn something new and they can have empathic learning. So they can attach their experience to, to new information. The idea is that people are part of this artwork, so they stand inside um, their creation, and they can share them as part of the process, the art process. 
there is two different kinds of stream machine, one for the brand and one for culture. This is an example of uh, uh, the 50th anniversary from Etro. They want to use videos from their history and we put this video inside an infinity room with the mirrors and people can create their own uh, vision and their own custom movie. We made 60,000 movies starting from seven in one month of installation and they can send a frame of this movie and share it as their personal as their personal uh, uh, creation. So we want to expand people's creativity, but we also want to expand contents because now, nowadays we are full of contents and our attention is very low. So we increase the attention, putting the people inside all the process that we made. The, the nice thing is that uh, stream machine is customizable. So, for instance, in uh, North Carolina, they create uh, an exhibition with stream machine and then they convert stream machine in a permanent installation, receiving a lot of uh, engagement from the visitors, simply changing uh, content. This was the first setup. And with the same idea, we are also working with cultural institutions to create an info point that, can, uh, that are able to uh, present location events in the city and letting people to create their own postcards to send around suggesting a new place to visit and new things to learn. We also make uh, live uh, um, printing during events, in this case for Meet Media Guru, we create a live postcard printing starting from the photos of the location of the event. The stop is uh, modular, so we can have just a, a touch screen wall or we can have immersive setup. But also we are studying new solution for uh, a standalone kiosk that are modular, modular and they can have a different um, uh, modularity in based on the client's need. So you will see in the bookshop uh, a prototype of our software and I invite you to play and see what is really uh, capable of the stream machine. Right now, our products are real, so it's not more a dream. And we create fine art prints, mugs, wallpaper, t-shirt, and puzzle, and all many other products that we want to include in our process. I invite you to uh, go, be creative, and uh, Last uh, uh, message I want to share with you is that nowadays it's important to work on tools and not on project because tools are able to be expanded and tools are used by you and not by us. Otherwise, projects, uh, they, can be, uh, they can be just a, a part of uh, the potential. So our idea is uh, that we want to empower people's imagination, unleash their creativity, and uh, try to put uh, new information in this amazing uh, emotional experience, trying to uh, pass new cultural improvements. At the end, um, we are also designing new personalized design souvenirs for events. So we are very, very uh, capable of um, building a custom experience for brands, but also a general tool for humanity. 
these are our contacts, and if you have any que question, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, Giacomo. We are going to uh, take a few minutes for questions. What a fascinating topic. Are you up for some questions? Um, no. No? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't understand. Sorry okay. for my English. Sorry if I was so blocky. Apparently, he doesn't want to answer any questions. <laughs> he does. I'm just kidding. Yeah. We are going to do some questions from the audience. Okay. Okay. So if anybody has a question in the audience, please raise your hand up high and we'll have someone run a mic over to you. When you decided to um, start that project to create, inter create abstract designs like that, did it start out as a project to create abstract designs or did you have another idea for it? Did it start as a project to create abstract or was it there another use that started oh, the project? Oh, it started as an abstract project, an abstract art project. And I think it will be in this way because my passion for abstract art was very big, but I had uh, the problem that abstract art is not uh, explained. So you can arrive, you can like it, but this abstract art, every time you see, you can understand that it's starting from something real. So for me, the big challenge of our project is that what you see, it seems abstract, but is definitely unreal, but is definitely starting from real world. So the abstract uh, expression is absolutely our pillars in a way, our pillar. So I think it will be always in this uh, kind of uh, art style. And is it a little follow up for me, has that been your passion? Yeah. Um, another time. <laughs> Has what? it been your passion for, for personally for a while? Yeah, yeah. Abstract art. Because it, it is all started when I was working on video games in 2007. The, the technology were very crap. We work on PS2. The graphics was crap, but the people, they want uh, real yeah. games like uh, realistic games with texture that were very small, few polygons, so it was a very stressful um, uh, task for me. So when I went back at home, I needed something that was uh, for me um, a cure, something that was able to show me something new, something that was free, something that was instant. And uh, starting from that, I decided to move at the opposite of realism, that is the abstraction, and stay there and understand how I can create tools that were able to amaze me uh, very quickly with the, the, um, with the possibility to explore my curiosity and not my technician skills or hardware skills. So it works uh, for my passion. It was uh, my passion and I think it will be my passion for the future. And, and we are gonna take more questions from the audience. Uh, let's, yeah, right over here. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, have you used any of that uh, real-time simulation you were talking about in uh, documentary films at all? Uh, no. Um, the next step that we are exploring now is sound and uh, visual uh, interaction. So, and also datas, big datas. So, for instance, imagine the big datas issue is that there are a lot of datas and no one understands anything of this data. That's all. You have to pay other agency to understand what this data means to you. So our idea is that if we are able to connect data to shapes, colors, and scenarios that are generated by data, probably this language is more direct and understandable for people. So we are not interested in a movie, we stay in game for entertainment, but we are interested to create this language for new purpose Imagine that you enter in your um, room of, of your company and looking at the shape of your giant, you can understand if he's going well or if he's uh, in a way going down 
without reading data, understanding Excel, or something like that. So this is the next challenge that we want to follow. Anyone else in the audience have a question for Giacomo? Raise your hand up high, we'll run a microphone to you. We do have a, a few more minutes. I have a question. Uh, yesterday we, um, we heard from Manuel Lima, who had a passion project, and then he had his real life. Yeah. How, it sounds like you have enabled yourself to turn your passion project into your career. Yeah. And can you talk about if there was a challenge to do that? <laughs> At, be, at the first, at beginning, or if it was right from the beginning, your passion, you made it your, your main thing. Yeah, uh, I'm transforming my passion in my work, thanks to my uh, wife. So she is my boss, she is my wife. So I made this transformation. Of course your I'm boss is your sure. wife, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> but uh, um, what is magical about that is that uh, I don't... I don't plan this as a, a grow for job. So it was a, a passion grow for me to uh, see something new. But when I share my vision to other people, they found something that they want to achieve with me. So it's like a natural uh, progress, a natural developers of my life and my work, they stay together. Um, connected with my passion and other passion like uh, we are veterans from video games but also we meet uh, 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 movie maker, uh, musician, mosaic artist, so the fashion designer but also we teach in the school, in museum, so every uh, input that we receive we collect it and we make uh, that this um, uh, inspiration uh, be part of our life, not our work. So in this case is very dangerous because we overlap the, the two things. But we are here and we are happy to, to be here as artists and as men, absolutely. Um, this, this also reminded me, um, last year we were, we're, we're, we're very grateful to host uh, the curator of the Rijksmuseum that opened yeah. up opened up their doors to yeah. use their art. Have yeah. you been? Do you have yeah. partnerships like that? Do you re re uh, leverage that? Yeah. When we start this project, we had the problem of copyright images, huh. and uh, the first uh, player that uh, opened the door was the Rijksmuseum. Museum. So we joined their challenge to be creative with their uh, with their artworks, and we won the prize uh, for that. So at that time. We went to Rijks Museum to present our idea that was not so uh, complete. And with them, we create also a, um, an event in, in Italy where we call all the museum to start thinking, making video games that are not based on their brand, but they are inspired by their contents. So it's very different. It's a, like a cul cultural shifting of how we can be inspired by culture and not uh, um, how we don't create video games for museum, but we create better video games inspired by museum. And they understood very quickly because they are very smart. And I have these, um, uh, these words from the director of the Rijks Museum. He said, we share all our contents in high resolution because we understood the things. We were missing the brand because our artwork were online, taking by the, the visitors with their own phones or camera. So all the artwork, they were uh, in a bad resolution with wrong colors. And so we decided to put this as part of our new brand identity. So Rijks Museum is a good uh, example of this. And are there other partnerships that you're working on or you have with other similar museums that have, that have taken the Rijks model to, to push themselves forward into the public eye? Yeah, we have North Carolina Museum that is uh, our first uh, uh, supporter in that and we have a dialogue with them. For instance, now they are doing uh, African textile using the stream machine 
and they are thinking also to create African textile by artisan using our visualization. So we enter in, uh, in, uh, in contact with the clients, but it's not uh, a, a unique interaction. They uh, understand how to develop more possibilities with our software. So we are working with them. We are working with the Museo della Scienza Tecnologia di, of Milan. And uh, in the future, we are also working with automotive brands that they want to explore design in this way. They want also to present their own design in a new way and then reveal their final design. So we are in between uh, reality and imagination. Um, and uh, any other questions from the audience? One final mention, of course, is that uh, you have an installation across the street yep. on the second floor. What can we expect to see over there? Are there is it preloaded with art from from yeah. mics and other things, or can we can people upload their own photos? Or okay, well, tell me. So the what is across the street that we can expect? Yeah, the installation there use uh, the college uh, logo and uh, artwork from uh, Creative Commons uh, uh, Museum in the World. So. Um, if you can send me the, the signal, I can show quickly. As you see, each uh, texture has its own info box where you can understand the starting uh, um, artworks. And so you will see uh, these uh, art masterpieces from the world. But the idea that you said where people can add their own stuff is the next level. We are working on mobile technology because imagine that when you go around, you see something, you can transform it, you can create your own stuff and receive three hours later at home. This is our big challenge. But the idea is putting contents in the hand of our uh, customers. And I think the, the, the mobile installation thing is going to be key for you. And uh, just last night, of course, you've all, you've all been at events where they put up these photo booths, and this is what you get on the output is a funny photo of you standing up dressed up. I'd love to see more of what you're doing replacing these cheesy photo booth dress up things, especially in the art community and design community. So yeah. a round of applause for Giacomo. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you so much.